What's up everybody? I'm the Mini Painter and today we're going to learn how to freehand Where's that? Scrolls. Let's get started. All right, everybody. So here we go. So I am going to try something new today. I'm going to try to narrate while I paint. So that's going to be something completely new. We're going to see how it goes. Got my good coffee here. Let's uh, let's get rolling. So as you guys saw, what we're going to be doing today is a little bit of scroll work. I've already sketched it out once here in my little sketch pad just to see how it's going here. That's what we're going for. Whoops. Knock something over. Oh, just some paint. That's what we're going for anyway. Uh, we're going to be putting it right here on the side of our leg plate. Uh, so there's the chevrons. It's going to hopefully go right there. Now, we're going to be trying to go for a much cooler type of... Um, of parchment today, so you guys can't see that. I'll, I'll tell you what that is here in a minute. So, but we're going to be going with basing a steel legion drab, rack hearth flesh, uh, pallid winch flesh, and then our shade. We're just going to try to use this uh, game color wash by uh, I think this is I think this is Vallejo. Might be Army Painter though. Actually, I really don't know who that's from. Hmm. I don't know. I bought it at the local hobby store though, so. I think it's Vallejo, but I mean any type of sepia wash, Agrax or shade would be perfect. Uh, for those of you who really pay attention, uh, this is actually the exact same thing that Darren Latham does for his cold purity seal parchment. Uh, so I'm actually going to leave the link in the description down below so that way you guys can go watch his video on that. Uh, I want to give credit where it's due. Um, that's where I got this color scheme from. So. Uh, I don't want to take credit for something that I didn't come up with on my own. Uh, and this wasn't that, so don't worry, that's that's where that came from. But I figured it was still worth showing you guys because um, for the freehand portion. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me get my glove on here. I reused the same plastic gloves. I know it's probably disgusting, but my hands don't sweat so that much right now because it's cold outside. So anyway, here we go. So we're going to take the Steel Legion Drab here excuse me thin that out a little bit probably so usually whenever I start these free hands I usually go about a one-to-one -one mix of uh, water to paint there we go so if you guys see right there see how that paint started to recoil there uh, after I put enough water in it how see how it draw want to draw back in it's a little bit too much from what I'm wanting right now it's decent for blending that consistency but not for what we're doing here so show you what I'm talking about it's still kind of recoiling but not that much uh, that'll probably be okay that's good for about uh, your sketch um, for your sketch consistency uh, I usually like to go a lot thinner for that that way it really just comes off that brush easy that way we don't have to fool with anything all right so here we go let's think about this so I want the bottom to be here Right, so we'll kind of mark that out just where we want the bottom edge to be just kind of see those two little marks there um, I have the top end of the first layer be here there we go that looks pretty good I want to bring it pretty far up so let's bring that up by the way this may look pretty thin and it is but I can always just thicken it up by adding more lines on top uh, whenever you do your sketches, I'd, I'd recommend that you sketch small rather than large. Uh, so that way, because you can always make it bigger, easier, rather than shrinking it down. Same thing for if you mess up. You know, mess up into your freehand, not out towards, you know, where your airbrush blend is. Anyways. Yeah, I don't really like that too much. So we're going to just paint it out a little bit more. There we go. So you got a little too thin there. Sometimes too, uh, whenever you get water on your brush, whenever you're dipping it into your pot, uh, th that'll actually really saturate that paint whenever you go to pick it up off your palette. And so sometimes you don't need to actually thin your paint as much as you just need to get the water off of your brush. You know, or you don't need to thicken your paint as much or uh, worry about the consistency that you've got it on the palette as much as it's just, you know, it's just the water on your brush. So that took me a while to figure out, by the way. So there's your, there's your tip for the day, I guess. All right, so we kind of got that going. We kind of messed up there towards the bottom. Let me look at my sketch real quick. Kind of see how I did that. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna have to, right now we're about right here. 
We'll have to bring that up and then around. So that's what we'll have to work on. Take a sip of coffee. We'll get it done. I think I'm gonna go ahead and widen this towards the bottom just a little bit. So actually if you look it tapers a little bit, so instead of doing that, I've got an idea. Instead of just going ahead and outright widening it, widening it, we're gonna work on we're gonna finish this part here that I'm already kind of having a hard time with. We're gonna get that to where we like it, since that's the challenging part, and then we'll work on the rest of this. Now you see that little loop there? Doesn't really look good, right? That's okay. Uh, because it's not shaded or anything like that right now, it's not going to make any visual sense to us. But because we practiced our sketch, we know what that line is for. So therefore, it won't. It won't. It's actually not that big a deal. And this is actually a good little outline. Yeah, that's going to work out just fine. Kind of add a little bit of a bend there, a little bit of shapeliness to it, and perfect. That's what we're looking for. And then we will just down just like that right there perfect that's what we're looking for now because I've kind of had to draw so many lines here it kind of messes with it whenever uh, messes with what I'm seeing whenever I look at it so we're gonna go ahead and fill this in real quick that way we have an idea of what we're working with there we go just like that not going for total coverage there either just just so we can see what we're working with and if you look it actually helped kind of add depth towards this back part right there so that's that's pretty good by the way, sorry about having all this extra stuff over here. Uh, that's just because I was doing a little bit of non-metal metallic earlier on uh, a eagle wing that I was working on. Right now it's taped off because I'm going to um, do that chevron work on the other side of it. I decided not to make a video of that just because uh, I already did a non-metal metallic video and there wasn't. It was really just me kind of doing a sketch and then filling it in, and I didn't. I didn't really see the point in doing that because um, I've already kind of done that a few times. So that's okay all right so since that line's already up here we're going to extend this out again just like that perfect that's what we're looking for nice all right let me set this down look at my sketch now what we're now what i'm working on is this little peak right this little curve right here so we'll get that done now should come out okay and if it doesn't and I accidentally fill it in or something like that that's actually fine because we can just go back in whenever we're doing our highlights and shades and then actually bring out the detail that we're going for so no mistakes just happy accidents hopefully that's not trademarked please don't sue me Bob Ross there we go just like that there we go and that'll work for now. It's not super visible, but it'll work out whenever we really start doing our highlights and stuff like that. It'll, it, it should come out just fine. Kind of make this make more sense. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. All right. Now what I like to do is kind of add some directionality to this line here. Since we're painting, we can just actually paint right over it. That way it makes perfect sense. Looky there. Just like that. Alright. Now, I may not like the angle of that though, but we might be stuck with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking a little bit too steep of an angle, but it's okay. We're going to work with it. I think I can still pull this off just fine because this line here will actually be the. If we draw that out, by the way, I'm just painting with water here. This is not any. No paint on the brush. If I draw this out. And go here with it. Yeah. yeah, it'll end up into that, and that's too far. So we might actually. Ooh, there we go. That's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna stagger it, and that's gonna look just fine, I think. That will be just fine. Just fine. I've always wanted to do scroll work, but I've never really gotten the chance to. So this is my first chance. I've tried it on some other models before, but I didn't really have a decent um, a decent color scheme to go off of, so, but now I do, so this should be pretty fun. There we go. Look at that. That's what we're going for right there. Can't beat that. Let me bring that line up and 
do our little squiggly or do our little bend and voila there we go that's basically our sketch right there follow through with it and boom there we go and then to fix that hey babe you coming to join your charger oh I, uh, it's right here I'm so sorry <laughs> don't steal your wife's charger while you're doing YouTube Sorry about that, baby. I did take a good charger, didn't I? Yeah, That's gonna be fine. Please <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> All right, get back to it. Sorry about that, babe. Anyway, there you go. There's your there's your marriage tip for the day. Don't steal your wife's charger. She's gonna find it. All right, so. Let's add in this line. Woo, hang on. Did you see that? Way too much paint on the tip there. It wasn't sharp like I wanted it to be. Good thing I caught that because that would have come out ugly. There we go. Yeah, the tip's a lot more sharp. If you notice that, don't try to paint with it. It's all, all that paint's going to rush off and you're going to be left with a nice mess that you did not want to have to clean up. So, another tip for you. All right, fill this color in now. All right. There we go. That's looking pretty good. All right. Fill this one in. Get a little more paint now. Now, if you're just trying to fill in, like what I'm doing here, that doesn't really matter as much. You, you can have quite a bit of paint on there compared to if you're just, you know, trying to do a sketch. I've seen some artists too that don't really need to do the sketch. They're able to, they actually are able to just kind of see where they're going with it the whole time and actually just start doing the blends and the highlights all the way before. Uh, Richard Gray is a good example of that. The way he does skulls is just, it's mind blowing. Uh, I can't do that, and I would recommend you guys get good at sketching uh, and drawing, actually. Uh, I doodle all the stinking time, and it really, really helps a lot. So whenever you get bored in, you know, your biochem class, and, you know, just start, just start drawing, you know. Who needs college anyway, right? Just kidding. But <clears throat> um, I do I do recommend practicing sketching. It, it has helped me a ton. And one thing, too, to keep in mind is your sketches actually might look kind of bad. But one thing I've noticed is after you paint it and add color to it, it looks so much better, no matter how bad the sketch might actually have seemed at first, especially on paper. So Plus, too, you got to remember it's a lot it, – honestly, I think it's easier – to blend with a paint with a paintbrush than it is with a pencil, and you know try to add like volume and stuff to your drawings with a pencil because you're, I mean you're literally working in grayscale essentially. So I tried to do a non-metal metallic drawing one time, did not turn out well. So another little tip for you guys. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good right now. Now the way I think I'm gonna add the shadow, and and be because like if I just painted this the same color as this then they, they wouldn't look the same. I've only gone over this with one coat, that's why it still looks differently. And so I'm gonna have to make this darker so that way you can actually tell there's a there's a difference in depth here. So I think what we're gonna do there, whoopsies. Since I do wanna stick with the way Darren did his stuff, we're just gonna take a little bit of our wash and we're gonna mix it. We'll do a one to one to one mix of the wash, uh, the steel legion drab, and then uh, water. So that way it stays really, really thin. Um, Again, I'd, I always recommend, you know, work thinner, not thicker, because you can always, uh, you don't want to lay down way too thick of a layer of paint. So, if you can see that on the palette, too, that's it right there. It's a lot darker, and that's what we're going for. So, see how it recoiled, too? Uh, so, actually, I'm going to change that up. Instead of doing a one to one to one, uh, water to Steel Legion Drab to the sepia, uh, just do a one to one sepia to Steel Legion Drab because I forgot this is a wash and so it's already really really thin so there's really no need to put any more water in, in it so oh that's what, what the heck happened here oh it's got some dust on it told you guys this room is dusty as i'll get out i don't know why so it's a nice apartment we live in so i don't really know why but gotta remember this is our shadow color so it's gonna go right here it, it'll work it's not great i'll probably need to make it a little darker let's do that by adding more sepia to it. it's definitely way too thin to really cover much, but that's all right. We'll 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 see how it performs. Eh, yeah. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to add a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to have to redo this mix. That's okay, though. Just add more paint to it. 
thicken that up a little bit. I've never heard of it, but I wonder if they have a paint thickener. Heard of all different types of thinners and flow improvers and all that jazz, but I've never heard of a paint thickener. So if you guys ever find that, let me know. Because then it essentially would let you use your wash as a paint. And dude, I'm not going to lie, Agrax Earth Shade would probably look really, really cool as a base coat to something. So I think I've always liked, I've always really liked Agrax Earth Shade. <clears throat> I think it's a great color. You can basically use it to shade almost anything, honestly. So I don't like Nolan Oil that much. I very rarely use it anymore. Uh, although I will use Nolan Oil Gloss on my metallics. Uh, I find that I really like that gloss a lot better. Um, it allows that metal to shine through like what real metal would. Alright. Here we go. So it's, eh, it's working. It's not super dark. We might actually have to add, I think we're going to have to add something else to this to darken it down enough. Might add... I'm wanting to keep this cool though, and this sepia is kind of warm. I might have to add just black to it, to be honest with you guys. Yeah, I think we have to add black to this instead. So, add another color. Use black. Abaddon black will work just fine for this. I'm not going to use a whole lot. Um, if we're doing one to one sepia and Steel Legion drab, um, uh, yeah, that's way too dark, and that grayed it out because I used. Alright. So we're going to change this up. So don't do that. Use Steel Legion Drab mixed with black. Now the reason why that grayed out is because if you mix red with blue, you're going to get purple. And then if you basically, you know, do that at a really dark tone, it's going to, I think it just grays it out really. Uh, and that's not really what I'm going for. Um, there we go. That'll kind of work. It'll work for now. If you can see this right here. This is what I was originally talking about. It looks very brown, but uh, it, it's a little too warm still for what I'm going for here. Remember, we want to keep this very cold. Uh, and the reason why, too, is I want it to contrast against this really warm, hot, bright red. Oh, man, we got a chip right there. I'll have to just make that battle damage later. Uh, anyway, uh, we don't want to go for... Like, or anyway, I'm looking for it to contrast against the... Um, it gets that warm bright red plus two this is the this is going to be the part of the shin on the night that's going to be in shadow because it's stepping backwards or it's the backmost leg rather uh, for those of you who have painted knights before you know they always they're all modeled the same way at least all their legs are with which one facing forward and one facing backward or like it's stepping forward rather and this is going to be on the back part so this will actually be in shadow so i also wanted to make this kind of look cooler than the other leg i actually did that too with this if you look on this one this one is much brighter than this one because this leg will be out like that right there. So, just something to think about whenever you're doing this. Uh, and if you don't, I mean, it's no big deal. I mean, no one's really going to notice that much. It does help, though, if you're trying to make that look just a little bit more interesting, you know. It's an extra detail. It's, it's, a, it's a little something that doesn't take much to do, and you can just, you know, just add it in there. So, I know you, you guys are probably getting way more than you bargained for from this video, but that's okay. That's what I'm here for. It's still a little too dark. I don't know what's going on with that. But that's alright. We'll figure it out. It's kind of funny. I've talked about not liking Nuln Oil, and that's essentially what I did there is replaced Agrax Earth Shade with Nuln Oil. So, <laughs> funny how the turntables have turned for all you Apophis fans out there. Alright. So, oh, we're getting somewhere with it. It doesn't look great so far. I hope that was not out of photo. It, you can kind of see the depth to it right there, and it's it's getting what I need to get done. But uh, what I am going to do, though, is we're going to make it lighter up here, a little darker down there, lighter, darker, of course. Um, actually, reverse that. I'm going to make it brighter up here, darker down here, and the reason why is I want it to follow the the uh, the red um, the red modulation there as well. Yeah, I think it'll be that'll be what I do. It'll look just fine. All right. So you can 
you see I just went ahead and filled that in there don't worry uh, that little design will come back how it looks like the you know the parchment's wrapped up and the way we do that is we just re-highlight that top edge won't be that bad now I am gonna this is 40k so this parchment of course cannot look perfect you know we're gonna tear it up a little bit we're gonna make it look uh, like it's been destroyed so you know it's gonna be a fun time it's gonna be a great time actually so yeah uh, I think that works I think that remained cool so I think that black and uh, steel legion drab actually came out really really well um, it's gonna look just fine oh dang it see where I went, went over the edge there so instead we're just gonna thicken it a little bit thicken the ribbon there we go now the way I'm going to do that I thought about doing it in two ways um, making it look as though there's two ways you can do this this battle damage that we're gonna do to this right here or to this scroll there's two ways to do it you can either imagine it as though it was actual battle damage done to the night in which case we would want to just put red underneath it because think about it if this paint got peeled off due to you know like shrapnel hitting it you would see the red undercoat or you could make it as though it's painted that way and the you know in 40k they're all depressing and gothic and so they would design it that way in which case i think we could get away with just using like black to make it look like there's like little cuts and stuff into this um i'm thinking we'll go with red though i think that well maybe we'll do a combination of both we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes Sorry about that, guys. Get a sip of coffee. All right, so let's see here while we're doing this. I really hope I kept this in frame really well. It looks pretty good. Uh, also, too, we're going to put some writing on here. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet. So I tell you guys, you know, hey, make sure you have all of your, you know, panels planned out before you do it. And I'm sitting here like, oh, well, you know, we'll figure it out. So I guess do what I say and not what I do. My father used to say that all the time. Good dude, but had goofy sayings. You guys see that? Yeah, I did. I see. Just, uh, just basically reinforcing that a little bit before we go to the next highlight. Oop! Or go to the first highlight. And we're not, I don't really want to push the highlights too much. I keep dropping this. My hands are a little too big for this. Um, uh, Actually, got a buddy of mine. He used to be a football player. I, I say my hands are too big. I mean, his are just freaking massive. So, used to play college ball and stuff. It was pretty funny. All right, there we go. Right. Now it's time to move on to our first highlight. That's actually looking pretty good. <laughs> honestly, you could almost just leave it right there. Um, nothing wrong with that, honestly, if you just wanted to crank out something really, really quickly. I'm trying to get it to where the light isn't reflecting off of that. But uh, it, it actually looks just fine. But uh, that's okay. We're going to keep taking it a step further. I want this to look pretty cool. So that's what we're going to do. And if, hey, you know, if it ends up ruining it or I make a bad mistake, well, hey, guess what? It really doesn't matter then because uh, then we can just go right back and cover it back with the base coat and call it a day. So uh, what I'm going to do here is a one-to-one -one mix of Rackarth Flesh to uh, Steel Legion Drab. And then uh, we'll just thin it out a little bit. Probably put a drop of brush water in there. Whenever I say brush water, just what I'll do is I'll clean my brush out. Dry it out on my uh, little towel here, get a drop of water, you know, if you guys can see that. About a brush full of water and mix it right in there, just like that. That's what I mean by a brush full. So, just in case, that, that way you guys know my weird mixing ratios. I'm trying to make this as specific as possible, that way you guys can follow along. So, that's about the consistency you want it right there. Yeah, there we go. So, we're going to highlight towards this direction. We're gonna see how this goes. 
And this is parchment too, so we want to think about the texture of how parchment's going to look. And so, if I think about it, parchment probably has a lot of little nicks in it and stuff. And so, we're gonna we're gonna probably hide, we're probably gonna make a little bunch of little lines going in both the vertical and horizontal direction. And I don't want the blend to be perfect either. We want it to actually kind of have some texture to it, kind of like that right there. If you guys can see that, um, and that's okay, because what we what we actually want here with this parchment is we want it to have texture. We want it to feel old and battered and beaten up. And so if it's not a perfect blend, it'll probably lend its lend more to that. And since it's set up against a pretty darn good blend, this really isn't my best airbrush blend. And I've kind of messed up this leg plate because I've dropped it so many times. But um, on something like, say, the shoulders of that, of the knight uh, over here, or like the, um, like if it was set against that right there, uh, the contrast would even look a little bit better, I think, because that blend is so clean. So, just food for thought. There we go. So, yeah, it's kind of getting a little bit more beat up looking. So, right now, honestly, right now it looks a little bit more just like a bad blend, but that's okay. We'll get there. We will get there. Not bad. Let's do the bottom one now. Same thing, just pulling it right down there towards the bottom. Now this will have to be a full length video because I am narrating over it. So we'll have to see how that works out. Just now thought of that too. I should have hooked this up to the laptop because I could have separated the audio. Oh well, you live, you learn. I'm just gonna draw this down. Make pretty quick strokes whenever you're doing these long blends too. Um, it's not long enough to where I need to essentially um, kind of. It's not. It's not long enough to where I think I need to go through and do like a um, like a wet blend or anything like that I think I can just sit here and pull it down and it'll be just fine but we'll see how it goes it's working so far hmm. and, and really too I'm not that I can't really wet blend that well so that, that's also part of the reason too why I just I don't want to try that Especially not on camera. I'm, I've never been a great wet blender. I can void blend all right. We can talk about that. Um, or uh, the the thing where you, oh, what is it? I, don't, I can't remember what it's called, but it's where you like um, lick the brush or you you know it's the thing where you uh, you get the body of the brush with one color and you put just a little bit of the color that you're blending in on the tip. Can't remember what type of blending. That might be void blending. I can't remember. I'll have to go Google that one. So I over highlighted that edge way too much. So we're going to knock it back down. It brought it forward towards us, and so it didn't look right. That's what we got so far. Uh, I'm actually going to blend in a little bit of the uh, just the standard Steel Legion drab, like here on this, and maybe a little bit towards the center just to kind of add a little bit more visual interest. If it's just stuck back there, I don't think it's going to look really, really good. So we'll see. I think that's going to work for now. We're going to take a little bit of, we're going to take just some, now what we're going to do is go back to Steel Legion Drab, just the plain color with nothing else. Mix it with just enough water to where you can flow with it, so about a brush load with what I put on the palette. So if you guys can see, it's right there on the palette. There we go that consistency. What we're going to do is we're going to actually highlight the back side now. Just like that. Just so, just so we can have a little blend going back there. That way it doesn't just look like it's just this random block sitting in the background. So and I think we'll try to add a little something right here. There we go. Doing those little blend strokes again. 
just like that right there. I think that'll be enough. We don't want to go any higher than that, really. Now what I'm going to do is take that original color, that Steel Legion Drab in black. We're just going to go right back over those edges again to work the blend a little bit more. I actually, like I said again, I don't really care if the blend doesn't look perfect. Like I said, we're not doing non-metal metallic here. We're actually doing parchment. So the rougher it looks, it's actually okay. It's kind of what I'm, I'm actually kind of wanting it to look a little rough. So we have some more of that Steel Legion Drab. Here, uh, I want it to. I want this to seem like it's coming out towards us. So we're just gonna blend this straight out towards us. Make it make it lighter towards the edge. Just like that. Kind of like it was about to make like another fold. So there we go. Work on blending this back down a little bit. Same here. Let's see how that looks. There we go. It's not too bad. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Where's our Steel Legion Drab? My bad. I just got Steel Legion Drab there. Didn't get any of that. In case you're really paying close attention. So what we're doing here is we're just going back and adding in that nice little curly detail. I really want that to be in there. I think it looks really good if you do this. But this sells the effect of this twisted looking uh, piece of parchment. Alright, so now what I'm going to do, I think, first off, I'm going to have to blend that out a little bit better. Because that now it just looks like this weird little bright spot. So knocked that down to quick glaze of the original base color there it'll work for now uh, what I think I'm going to do here to make this look more like parchment uh, honestly this would almost this is almost good enough for me and what I'm trying to do right now uh, but just to kind of make it look a little bit better we're going to take some of that base coat for the dark colors so that one-to-one -one black with steel legion drab we're going to thin it out a little bit more than what we've got so you want it to be about blending consistency, so if you look just about like that right there, if you guys can see that on my finger, just like that right there, nothing too, gosh dang it, gotta keep doing that, or gotta quit doing that. I think I'm just going to try to dot it in random areas, kind of add random dark spots to it, we're going to see how that works. So I think what that's going to do there is it'll make it look like this, this parchment's been pocketed and maybe messed up a little bit here and there basically what we're doing here is stippling so if you guys know what that is it's where you basically just stab your you know your piece with a bunch of random like you just stab it a lot with your brush so all right we'll do that that that'll, that's kind of getting our effect across not much but i think i know i think i know that gave me an idea i think i know what we're going to do here uh basically we'll go in We'll do the stippling with the dark side, and then we're going to come in with the highlight color, and we'll do that again. So we'll take our highlight now, and we're going to stipple with it, too. I think that will bring out that parchment feel, especially if we do it kind of in an up-and-down motion, because it's paper. You want to see, like, the fibers and stuff like that. Yeah, it makes it look like it's been scratched up and stuff. There we go. That's kind of getting our idea across here, what we're trying to do. The way I stipple too is I just put like my ring finger down, plant it, and then I just rotate my wrist back and forth. It allows you to get a really fast motion in there. Works pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of working. I'm kind of liking it, kind of not. It's getting the idea across though. So I, I just did the main highlight color up here at the highest points. I'm going to come back here with Steel Legion Drab, just plain. And that's actually going to kind of be our highlight for where we uh, did the darker color down here. That should work. Now Steel Legion Drab will be the, also the highlight for back here as well. Yeah, a little too, bit, too much of a big dot there. that a few times all around perfect 
once that dries out. By the way, whenever you're doing this and you stab it the first few times, it's going to look a lot brighter, but once it dries out, it won't be nearly as bright, and that's totally fine. That's how all paints are. Not necessarily with brighter, but as in that they look different after they dry. So that's why sometimes whenever you see me blend, they'll be, like if I'm blending both sides into one, or like if I'm doing like a non-metal metallic thing and I'm trying to blend this side and this side into this really bright spot, you'll see me leave the drops in the center. It will leave a little bit of an extra paint line there, but that's okay. Normally once it dries out, it's not really that bad. And then once you get really good, you just don't leave those drops there. Not that good yet. But I'm getting there. We're getting there. I'm just going to reinforce this line again. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I'm pretty much happy with that, but I am going to go up one more into a little bit of a higher highlight. We're going to add in some of this. This is Pallid Winch Flesh. Again, sticking with Darren Latham's way that he does it. Now, he uses this almost as like an edge highlight. He does go up into white in that video, but we're not going to go quite that high for this. We're just going to get it really, really thin. We're basically just going to do that stippling all over again. We're going to see how it turns out. Shouldn't be that bad, though. Ideally. Excuse me, by the way. My apologies. I will probably edit that out. So... What we're just doing here is we're going to edge highlight the edges of this just a little bit. So that way it makes it pop a little bit more. There we go, just like that. Edge highlight that back end. Just not not all the way, just enough so that way it's it translates that this edge here has folded back. There we go, just like that. Now we want it to look like this is bent, if you think, just like that. So I'm actually going to have to play with this blend a little bit here. And what we're going to do is we'll make this back side probably would be highlighted right here the most. If you look right through there, and then it'll probably taper off and have a little bit of a shadow right there. So that'll be how we play that. It should look just fine. Same thing up here. Get our edge highlights down. Crazy. Almost made a mistake there. Uh, block in the main highlight right there. And it'll blend back. There we go. Just like that, right? The idea here is that the reason I'm leaving that top edge still highlighted is so that way it'll still show that connectivity there between the between this front part and this back part. The connectivity, the connection. My apologies. I'm not used to doing this whole YouTube thing, you know. I'm only like a weekend. We'll blend out the tips here with this. Just so it really, we really want to bring that up to the front. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just think it really adds some visual interest out there towards the end. So, that's really all we're doing here. I really like how it's gotten a lot brighter now. We might actually brighten this whole thing a little bit. So, because that Steel Legion drab is actually a really dark color compared to like what we've got going on the rest of this model. You know, like the lion's head and the non-metal metallics and all that stuff. This is actually a really, really dark color. I think I'm going to do that. So, oh yeah, we're going to have to do this. So we're going to brighten this up quite a bit. Actually, I'm calling an audible here. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do that. So instead, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to have this be almost the first highlight, not the last one. And then up, and then this will be Steel Legion Drab. And then this 
50-50 Steely and Drab and Black will be our darkest. I think that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to remix, all right, and reevaluate and keep going. That's okay. The reason this probably looked better on like uh, the way Darren Latham did it is because he was doing it on an actual model, and we're doing it on we're doing a freehand. And so anytime you do freehand, I found that it needs to be brighter than what you would normally just paint on a model. Uh, not yet sure why that is. Uh, probably has probably just simply because we're doing this in 2D, whereas models are 3D, and so you're already your eyes are already drawn to it. And plus, light plays across them a little bit differently than it does on this two dimensional surface. <coughs> Right, keep moving. Sorry, guys, gotta have that coffee, you know. All right, so now we're gonna just blend this back. There we go. I'm okay too with messing up, and it really wasn't a big mess up or anything like that. But I'm okay with it because now we just add more layers to this, and I think with parchment, the more layers you add, the better because it'll add that it'll just make it look more rough. Because parchment's rough, you know. It's not. I've never, anytime I think of parchment, I never think of just a clean sheet of paper. It's always got texture to it. It's been used, you know. Uh, it reminds me of, like, uh, the guy in, uh, oh, Game of Thrones, uh, the, the fat guy who, um, uh, the the really smart one, oh, Sam, I think is what his name is. He's Jon Snow Snow's friend. It always reminds me of him because he's, you know, like the librarian guy and, uh, he's really, really smart, so you always mess around with those old books and stuff. So that's what I always think of with parchment. In case you guys were wondering, you know, there's my Hermione Granger moment for you Harry Potter fans. All right. There we go. It's a little bit better. Definitely brightened that up quite a bit. I definitely like that. We'll, we'll work on these two blends because they look kind of rough right now. Uh, I do actually like... How this is a lot darker, though. I actually might leave that. It really... Uh-oh, hang on. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> is that going to come off? Yeah, it's going to come off. i got to rub it out. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. Whenever I did that, I accidentally poked it and left a big mark. If that ever happens, you wet your brush real quick and just, you know, rub it off. It'll be fine. So, anyway. Yep, I think I like that a lot. So, we're just going to keep messing with it. Blending it up. Just like that right there. We'll go back through here and probably stipple this too, and then we'll add some damage to it and stuff like that. I've seen some really nice parchment done where it's actually very smooth, and they just add the little nicks to it by adding like black and stuff like that and making it look very crisp. I don't like that as much. I want this to look like it's like it's uh, got some realism to it, um, and that's up to you how you want to do that. If you wanted to make it look really, really smooth and your blends to be perfect, then hey, that's totally fine. Um, I, I just don't like that as much. I think it looks better if it's, if it's actually kind of, kind of rough. So that's up to you though. All right. Let me kind of, mm, a little too thick there for blending. So we're going to take that Steel Legion wrap. By the way, you can actually do this on your glove if you're doing, I wouldn't recommend doing it on skin, but, uh, you can actually thin out on your glove because it's plastic. So. You know, it's not really much of a huge difference than like a palette, like an like an actual palette. Obviously, not a wet palette. So, unless your hands are just that sweaty, in which case, woo. All right, so that's working. Uh, I think what I'm going to do with the recessed, so this line, so we're going to make it really dark right here. We're going to bring it up a little bit right uh, here, because if you think about it, this should be coming forward steadily. So, uh, take some black. Mix in just a little bit. Normally, too, you want to use a separate brush for mixing than uh, your actual, like, freehand brush. Uh, I use this really, really big one here. This used to be an Army Painter Regiment. I actually really, really like that brush, by the way. It's an awesome one. But I've used it just so much, you know, it just, it just got, got to be a bum brush. So it happens to the best of them. So I'm just going to add a little line right there. By the way, this is so dark, you almost don't even need to worry about blending it. Uh, darker colors uh, are easier to blend. For those of you who haven't watched any of the other videos, uh, I talk about that a lot with non-metal metallic, how whenever you're doing, uh, whenever you're doing uh, in an NMM, blending your highlights is always a lot harder than blending your shadows because you can just see it if you mess up so much easier. There we go. So... 
anywhere where this parchment is going back in, in the in darker or deeper areas, like back into the plate, as in like into it, uh, we're going to make that darker. Trying to make it look like that wraps around, but it's not working out so well. I'm going to have to re-highlight that, I think. I don't want to use my brightest color. We're going to kind of go for that mid Steel Legion Drab plus the, um, plus the uh, Rackarth Flesh. That's what we're using here to draw this top edge line here. It kind of worked, kind of didn't. Went a little too bright with it, but I think it'll work for now. I'm not really painting this model for a competition or anything like that. Uh, I'm actually painting it just for my uh, Knight's Army that I'm going to have. Uh, the way I'm going to, well, I'll talk about more about that later. Whenever I'll probably do a concept video for it, but this is actually almost done, guys. Uh, then we're going to do next part. We're probably going to add some holes to it. Uh, I will finish blending this out and then fixing that little top edge and... Really, that's about it. Maybe blend that little bottom part a little bit. Get some more of this out. Still eating drab, by the way. If I have to redo, if I have to do a voiceover over over this whole thing because this video is too long, I'm going to be sad. That'd be all right. It's worth it. I really hope you guys really like this video and enjoy it because I enjoy making these. Oh well. But I hate dropping these. I'm gonna start like a little counter here on the video, in like the bottom right, so you get so we can like have a good laugh about how many times I dropped this piece. For you, all you guys, all Parks and Rec fans out there, I feel like Jerry. There we go. Kind of focus on blending this back up. It might be too bright, and if it is, not a big deal. I'll just go right back over it and darken it back down. I'm just kind of playing with it here and seeing what all these will look like once they're done. Once it's all dry out. And as you can see there, see how that dries a little bit differently? And it almost blends it out. I'll end up going over this again right here with a little bit thinner version of it. That way it'll kind of glaze that blend out, and we'll see how it looks. But I think it'll come out just fine. Reminds me of a really thin consistency, right? We're gonna thin. We're gonna blend this right here because we wanted to make it look like it's like it's bent around. So this should get darker, like right here. But I might have overdone that a little bit, and that's okay. If that happened now over here, it would have been the same case. But I think. I'm telling you, we're gonna have a counter about how many times I drop this. But since it's kind of coming this way I don't think you would actually see it get dark on this top edge so we're not gonna worry about as much as we will down here and if this looks ugly hey we just won't do it we'll just go right back over it it'll be just fine so that's looking pretty good though if you ask me yeah won't be a sexy leg my wife's probably outside the door right now dying laughing I showed her the first video, that, that intro video I did, uh, whenever it got to that part with the Ultramarine. Uh, she looked at me and she goes, you have to change your last name. I'm like, no. You married me. You're stuck with it. So, <laughs> it was pretty funny. There we go. Kind of blending that transition. Nothing crazy. Yeah, we're going to have to go back over that again, I think. Shouldn't be too big a deal though. And so I've actually still got paint on the brush here. I'm just gonna poke up my water a little bit. And so if you see there, see how there's bare like you really that just looks like water almost, right? There is a little bit of paint in it. 
can't even see it on the video. We're just going to use that to basically thin that or blend that transition a little bit more, a little bit better. I know I said I liked the transition to be kind of stark here, but I, you do want a little bit. What, I'm, what I really kind of want to see are more, I guess, what I say, brush strokes. Uh, like if you get really closely, let me see if I can focus the camera. If you look, you can see my brush strokes still. I'm totally okay with that, especially with parchment, because you, you want to have that. Sorry about that. That's a big old piece of dust that got caught. That's going to happen sometimes in your models, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it except just don't be dusty. If you look, there's a lot of dust on here. Before I, uh, what I like to do with this whenever this happens is after this completely dries, uh, I will just wash it with water. Typically, it'll knock all those little nasty pieces off. And then what I'll do is I'll coat it with uh, matte varnish. Goes right over fine. Or if I, uh, well, actually, with this piece, since I'm going to probably use it a lot for my army, what I'll do is I'll coat it with gloss varnish, and then I'll coat it with uh, matte varnish just to knock it right back down. Uh, gloss varnish uh, makes it actually makes a way stronger, excuse me, uh, protective hold, and that's just because of the way that stuff is made. Um, it is made to have it's made to reflect light perfectly, and so it makes a really strong crystal lattice structure over the uh, over what you paint it over and that's how it reflects light so well whereas the matte varnishes are designed to disperse light and interrupt it and so they're not strong lattice structures and so they, they don't it's actually doesn't protect as well a little factoid for you da, 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 da. brighten that up a little bit more honestly guys it's looking pretty good kind of like it I think that'll work for now it's not super perfect if this is if this is if I was gonna paint this for competition I would spend a lot more time with this I would actually probably not even do it this way where I like to show the brush strokes I'd actually do it the really smooth way but that's okay I'm not doing it for competition I'm just doing it for me and so we'll just leave it like that and then now I'm gonna add the little chipping I think I am going to use black for it. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, I, I will do battle damage over it, but that's gonna that's gonna come later. I like to do all my battle damage at once at the end, and so the way we're gonna do this here is we're actually just gonna put little nicks in it. Now, my my fault. I should have added this with Steel Legion Drab, so we still want it to kind of have that dark tone. Because all we're doing here, especially right here, is we're just showing up underneath it with um, basically what we're showing is like there's a nick in this and so up underneath it you're going to see the actual um, the uh, gosh dang it the scroll underneath my bad I'll learn how to talk one of these days guys I promise so there you go so there's a little nick so we're going to add a few of these just throughout the piece All I'm doing here, if you look on the palette view, uh, I'm just mixing. I just get a little bit of black on my brush, and then I'm going into like this really dark color that we have right here, and I'm just mixing them, and it's getting me a dark. And that's way too, way too much black. So we still want to have some brown in there. We can see. So we'll add a nick here, same as like what we did up there. So and see how that's not just like a perfect little triangle. Not a big deal at all. If you rip up paper, it's never perfect. So do the same thing up here. Add one there. Um, hmm. So that's not going to be good. So I'm going to have to go through here. I'm going to have to blend these together so that way it actually looks like that's the parchment underneath. That's all right. See where we can do another one now because I did this. Um, I'm not going to be able to put really any nicks in the center, just because that would probably need to be red. And I don't want to mess with that right now, so I'm not gonna. I'll save that for whenever I do the actual battle damage. So there's that. So 
so if you look, this actually looks almost like it's painted on top of it. And it's the reason why is because it's really hard to tell, but there's actually a little bit left in there. Uh, there. There's a little bit of a bright spot in there, and what that's doing is it's making it look like it's, it's almost highlighted, and that's why it's not selling the effect. So what we do is we just go right back over it again. And you also want to make the edges really, really crisp because that's what's going to make it look like a tear. There shouldn't be any blend here. This should be just about as dark as it gets. It's just as stark as it can be. So, still didn't do too good. That's okay. We'll go back over with Steel Agent Drive, sharpen it up, and it'll come out just fine. So, here's that Steel Agent Drive. Oop, not thick enough. We'll have to hit it again. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Down here, we're going to blend this out now. If you look down here, we're going to blend this out. That way it all makes sense. Definitely too stark. We'll probably have to go over that again with a little bit of steel you can drab and black. Again, not a big deal. It's almost enough nicks, I think, for this free hand. I could add one up here. I don't think I really want to. It's too much work. Could probably do it though. I'll think about it while I'm mixing this. Still easy to drab up with black. There we go. About that consistency right there and that color. Or not that consistency, sorry, about that color. It's a little bit too thick. That's about what we're going for right there. If you can see that. Not enough black yet, so we're going to go add a little bit more. There we go. You guys can see that. Maybe it was enough the first time. All right. Too thick, so we're going to thin it out by just placing the brush into our water. Not going to avoid the whole brush. Too much work. Since that's still wet, we're just going to um, basically taper that out. Eh, did a little too much, so we're going to have to go over this again. <laughs> just got to keep doing it back and forth, back and forth. That's how you do blending, guys. It's just basically trial and error over and over and over and over and over again. But once you get it, it it's kind of kind of like riding a bike. You know, you figure it out, it's great. Same thing with non-metal metallic. Once you figure it out, you're basically good to go. So... And I, I would like to say it's the same way with freehand, but uh, what I have found is that there's certain things I'm really good at with freehand, and there's just certain things I'm not really good at. Um, I'm okay with blending, kind of of all shapes and sizes. I can blend pretty well. Uh, and so anything that requires a lot of blending, I'm pretty okay at. Uh, I'm getting better at non-metal metallic. The, the only weakness I have right there, big weakness that I have right there, is um, my light placement. I haven't figured out how to do that just yet. Just right, just yet, but don't worry, we'll get there. Um, computer's running low on store, so we have to wrap this up. All right, so that's basically what I'm going for right here. Uh, let me take a let me correct this top edge real quick, and then that'll be that. Then I'll do the lettering, and we'll be done. Short, sweet, and to the point. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Especially from a distance too. That's gonna look. Let me focus the camera on that. Oh yeah, that's gonna look great. Can't beat that. One thing too about me is like now that I've really kind of gotten into doing this uh, more higher level freehand painting, that type of thing, uh, I like all of my models to have some type of freehand on them just, just so, because I think it adds a lot to them and it really adds character to them, you know, it makes it yours. Because uh, no, nobody else really has a whole lot of freehand on their models, you know. So, gotta have it. Alright, so that'll work. Uh, this little wraparound piece really did not come out the way I wanted it to, but that's okay. Um, I might go back and fix that at a later date. Uh, what I'm going to have to do to fix it probably is just... Uh, compl Actually, here, I can just go ahead and do it. It's not going to take me but a second. So get our darkest dark. Just go in there and fill it right in. That's literally all there is to it. And I'll just make it look like it's wrapped around back there. 
still leave that top edge just barely highlighted. That'll be all there is to it. There we go. And I'll darken that up just a wee bit more. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this, but this almost looks green now. It's kind of cool. I'm probably going to have to start doing a little bit more research into my videos so I can get you guys the whys and hows behind all this, which a lot of it I already know, but I don't want to give you guys bad information. I want to make sure it's solid before I tell you. So, because, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of stuff I don't know, and, and I'll, I'd like to give you guys all the information, stuff like blending and things like that, and the light spectrum, so I'll have to do some more research for that. Go read all them science Wikipedia articles, you know, color theory and whatnot, so... Definitely overextended that blend. That's okay. There we go. Um, I'm going to work this blend one more time. One more good time. And we'll be good to go. Before my computer over there runs out of space. Uh, by the way, I filmed the palette with the computer. And so I've got it propped up on like a like a RPG book. So I think it's, I think it's Pathfinder. Yeah, and so uh, that's what I have to use to prop up my, uh, that's how that camera runs. And then, of course, my cell phone camera records this right here. And it works out just fine. There we go. I think that'll work. Yeah. That'll be it. Okay, so now we got to think about what do we want to write on here. Um, and I was thinking... Um, What's something that means... I thought about putting Kronos on there. Uh, Kronos is in time. Um, you know, I thought about, like, chivalry, things like that, timelessness, that sort of thing. Uh, that's what applies to knights and things like that. Like, I like to... Whenever I put a name to something, I like it to reflect, you know, what we've got going here and all those sorts of things. So, you know, what would be a good name for this or what would be some things that this knight would want to write on his own armor. And so, timeness, uh, strength, that sort of thing, uh, whatever the Latin word for strength is would be a good idea, but I don't know it off the top of my head. I think Latin sounds a lot better too, especially for like, you know, Warhammer, because Gothic and all that type of thing. And I think it lends well to the Gothic writing, so, unless you name it like a really cool Warhammer name. So, I haven't thought of a name yet for this knight that's gonna go you know, on his nameplate right here, but we'll figure it out. Hey, if you guys have a good idea, drop me a drop me a comment. Maybe I'll make maybe you know maybe I'll name it that. I don't know. Let's do uh, Kronos. C R O N O S. C R O N O S. So that's six letters. So I would need to put. The way, anytime you do writing, you want to start with the center letters, and so you want to, like, since this is a six-letter word, you can't put the center letter dead on the center. You need to put one here, and one here, and then two more, and then two more. So, we'll do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, so see, see how my brush isn't in a tip? It's because the paint's so thin it can't hold it in a tip. So we're going to have to thicken the paint a little bit by just adding a little bit more because I thinned it too much. This is that air paint, so I might have to see if I've got any Abaddon Black <coughs> to make it thick enough. It's funny, isn't it? Usually we talk about you know having really thin paint, but sometimes you don't actually want thin paint. Sometimes you want it to be just thick enough. There we go. Now it's holding that point. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is. So see. We're going to do, let's do K, K-R-O-N-O-S, so it's going to be O right here. There we go. I'm not going to say a whole lot while I do this, by the way. because I'm trying to focus. Mm, 
ain't starting to dry out, so. Alright, let's keep going. Looks like I wrote these too small. That'll be alright. Won't make too much of a difference. So it looks like I accidentally put that scratch right where my K is going to be. That's alright. I'll make it look more realistic. There we go, just like that. Now I might widen this R a little bit. Just like that. There we go. And it looks like we just ran out of video. So don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this up on the phone. Uh, for the palette, don't worry. I'm. It's literally just black paint. Same consistency as what you guys saw last. I'll let you, I'll I'll just narrate it if it changes. I don't think it will since we're just going to be writing out letters. Try to send the O out now. I end up making that bottom line thicker in the process. That should be alright. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. There we go. Perfect. So, paint's a little too wet, as you can see. Uh-oh, it looks like it dried out. That'll be all right. Let's get a little bit of that highlight color that we use right there. Sorry if you guys can't see this on the palette. We're getting that, that highlight color we used. I'm just going to go right over this. Send it right back out, just like that right there. No worries. Make sure that, by the way, if the brush or if the paint's too thin and it's coming off thick like that, before you put your, like after you wash it off your brush, um, you're going to want to make sure that it's, your brush doesn't have a whole lot of extra um, water on it. Make sure it's bone dry by just rubbing it on your um, paper towel a lot or whatever it is you use to dry out your brush. Old t-shirt, you know, whatever it takes. And S. My computer's over there freaking out, telling me it's running out of disk space. Surely it's not still recording. There's Chrono right there. And then we'll do, do like Dialogus for speech. I can't think of anything else right now, so we're going to end this video right here because it looks like my computer's freaking out. Uh, don't worry. Uh, I mean, black lettering, you guys have already seen me do this. It's not much. It won't be any different for that down there. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, that was fun. All right, so that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I try to post videos at least once a week about how to do a different type of freehand. And if you know somebody else who would like to do a scroll on their model, be sure to share it with them. It really helps me out, and it'll help them out too. Scrolls can pretty much go anywhere in 40K. They really add that gothic aesthetic, unless, of course, you're doing something like, you know, Eldar, Dark Eldar, Tau. But if you're doing anything Imperium, it works really, really well. So without further ado, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.